Okay, well, thank you, uh, Karen, for inviting me to come and talk today. Um, I think my talk hopefully will follow on quite nicely from uh, Karen's last talk. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give you a fancy uh, medically talk with lots of graphs and statistics and fancy procedures. What I'm going to do is just talk to you about some of the people I've met over the last uh, 15 years in Auckland um, looking after patients who've had the Fontan operation. Um, my job is a great job. I get to do about 50% paediatric cardiology and about 50% adults with congenital heart disease. And so <coughs> my youngest patient might be a few hours old. My oldest patients at the moment are in their 70s. Um, and I could easily have a day where I do a paediatric clinic and see someone like Keanu here, who's five years old, had his Fontan 18 months ago. And this is him braving the hairdresser. Um, and in the afternoon, I might see Laurie, who's 51, um, had his Fontan 30 years ago, and is here braving the pacemaker clinic. Um, and it's a great privilege to see such a variety of ages and people. Uh, but the first person I want to talk to you about is one of the first Fontan patients I got to know in Auckland when I arrived in 2002. Um, and he was, in fact, the first patient to have a Fontan in Auckland. And I think that makes him the first in the region. Is that right? I'm not sure. But uh, certainly one of the very first. Um, and I want to show you his operation report for a few reasons. So this is a sort of historical document, really, of the Fontan operation in this, in this region. And you can see it was done in June 1975. Uh, the surgeon was Sir Brian Barrett Boyce, a legendary New Zealand surgeon, and this is Sir Brian. Um, and Sir Brian was a sort of groundbreaking surgeon, not only in this area, but in, in the whole world, really, and he literally wrote the book, um, Cardiac Surgery, which was the definitive textbook of cardiac surgery for a long time, and is still going long after his death. But I also want to show you, particularly because we're here in Brisbane, who the second surgeon was, Peter Polner, um, surgeon here in Brisbane for a long time. So this really is a sort of... Uh, a history lesson for the Fontan in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and this chap, I met him when he was about 38 years old, this patient, in 2002. Um, and unfortunately, he was quite sick at that stage. You can see he'd had his Fontan operation when he was 16 years old. And so he'd spent much of his, well, all his uh, childhood years very blue and very limited, wasn't able to do much sport and exercise. But he'd sort of found his own passion in life, um, and that was playing the guitar. And he was a great guitar player. He was really good. He, um, he was a tutor, a guitar tutor. He used to give lessons. And uh, I remember he'd come into the ward, and he'd be in for a few days, and he'd bring his guitar with him. And he'd, <laughs> it chokes me up, actually, thinking of that. And he would be, um, a glass of water? <laughs> He would be on the ward playing his guitar and all the old boys would gather around and listen to him and it was a beautiful thing to see. So anyway, back to Keanu. Um, <laughs> so when he was born, Keanu, I remember talking to his parents and uh, I would often tell a story to parents about this guy playing his guitar because he couldn't do much sport and stuff. And Keanu's parents are super outdoorsy folk. They do everything outdoorsy you can imagine. And so the guitar story didn't really cut it with that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, so I could tell they have sort of nodded politely, but I could tell they weren't really buying that. Um, but Keanu had his surgery uh, and then came back and had his Glen, and he was doing really well and, and things were great. He lives down country, so I didn't see him for a few years. And he came back when he was three and he was getting ready for his Fontan. And... Um, I met him again because he was having an MRI scan. So we put him in the scanner and we saw this. Um, I don't know if this thing has a pointer, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, you can, even if you've never looked at a Fontan, you can probably see that this is a bit funky. So all this stuff at the bottom here, 
And over here, all these fancy lines that look a bit psychedelic, they're not supposed to be there. And so we got him straight out of the scanner because we knew that this meant there was some metal somewhere inside him. Um, so we did an x-ray of his belly and you can see that bright little ring-shaped thing down in his pelvis. And we thought, oh, okay, <laughs> Keanu's been eating something. <laughs> and so we sent him home and uh, his mum kept an eye on his poos <laughs> and she emailed me that picture the next day and I'm not sure if anybody recognizes what that is, but that's a washer, but it's a particular type of washer that you use on your brake blocks on your bike. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so Keanu had been out in the garage with his dad fixing the mountain bikes and he'd eaten a washer. Um, and that kind of sets you up for Keanu's existence. So I asked his mum if I could talk about him and she sent me some photos. And here he is uh, before his fontan. This is Keanu getting ready for a bike race. Um, and here is sort of some representative photos of his life. So biking, skateboarding, luging, hiking, mountain biking. He's doing it all. So he's out there. No guitars, you've probably observed. <laughs> um, and the, if we can just show the first video, that's a, a video of what Keanu is up to. Ooh. Sorry, we couldn't quite get PowerPoint to play ball on it. Come on, you go. Go oh, Awesome! <laughs> so that's Keanu up to his tricks. Um, and I'll come back and talk some more about Keanu a bit later on. But uh, so I was thinking about what else I could talk to you about in this clinic, and in, in this talk, and I went and did a clinic uh, down in Hamilton in Waikato, about two hours south of Auckland. And this is a joint adult clinic I do with one of the cardiologists down there. And they set up the list of people I'm going to see, and I just turn up and do my stuff. And uh, so this particular day, it's only about three weeks ago, we had ten patients booked, and six of them were Fontans. So I looked at the list and I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> this is going to be a big clinic. Um, but uh, in fact, it was perfect. It was complete serendipity, because this is six adult Fontans, out there doing their stuff. And you know, Karen's talked to you about the anxieties that I'm sure many of you have felt about what the future holds for your children. And so hopefully this can give you a bit of information about that. So the six people I saw were these people. I saw a 29-year-old Fontan patient. He'd uh, had an aortic valve replacement a couple of years prior. He'd had a pretty tricky time after that. He'd um, had a lot of problems with short-term memory loss in a few months after his surgery. Struggled with his job because of that. But he was now a whole lot better. His memory is pretty much back to normal. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully I won't cry anymore, but I've got this just for um, And he was doing a whole lot better. The next was a 39-year-old lady. She'd unfortunately had a stroke at the beginning of the year, but she was almost fully recovered from that, and she was doing pretty well too. I saw a 19-year-old uh, girl. Um, her main issue was that she was really not keen on warfarin, and so we talked about that, and we planned to switch her to aspirin. There was a 24-year-old boy. Now, he didn't come, but as, as, as you'll find out, he had pretty good reason. <clears throat> then I saw an 18-year-old. She was having some issues with the heart racing and maybe some abnormal rhythms, so we were waiting for a rhythm monitor for her. And then lastly, I saw 41-year-old Fontan. He'd had problems with uh, abnormal heart rhythms many years ago and had been converted from the original version that Prem told you about to an extra cardiac convert, and he'd done really well since then. So medically, those are the people that I saw in my clinic. And I'm not going to stand up here and tell you people who are, pretty, who are very well educated about this. I'm not going to tell you that there are no bumps in the road here. I'm not going to tell you that there aren't things that you need to, will have to deal with. But what I'm going to tell you is that these people are dealing with it and doing it pretty well. So what I really saw was not a 29-year-old Fontan. It was actually a 29-year-old plumber. Um, He's been working for a plumbing company for a few years now. He's starting out his own business with a couple of mates. He's keeping active. He's really doing well. 
I didn't see a 39-year-old Fontan patient. I saw a 39-year-old flooring consultant. She does indoor design, interior design. She's got a teenage son. Since her stroke, she's got healthy on a healthy diet. She's lost 10 kilos. She feels fantastic. I didn't see a 19-year-old Fontan. I saw a 19-year-old nursing student. She's loving it. She told me about a biking trip that she'd done. It sounded really cool to a local waterfall, but she had struggled a bit coming back up the hill. <laughs> I didn't see a 24-year-old Fontana. I didn't see him at all, but the reason for that was that he's an IT professional. He's spending a couple of years working in California um, and having a fantastic time of it. Um, the 18-year-old girl, well, she's a trainee accountant. She works at KPMG, and she's studying at university to get her, on time, get her uh, accountancy degree. <laughs> there isn't yet a degree in Fontans, but that, that'll come, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and then the 41-year-old guy, he's a lab technician. He works at the hospital there, in fact. He's got two young children. He's pretty active. He's a runner and a walker. So yes, there are medical things going on with these people, but they're out there just living normal lives. And, you know, I haven't selected out six of my best people, six of the Fontans who are doing best. This was just a random selection that happened to be in my clinic. And the, uh, the one I, I always chuckle about is the 41-year-old fellow. So I've known him for a long time, since before he had his Fontan conversion. And I saw him down in this clinic in 2004 with a previous cardiologist down there called Hugh McAllister. And Hugh wrote a letter that I'll show you a snippet from. In the past, I have recommended, and Green Lane has recommended, warfarin, but he's keen to avoid that and continue with aspirin. The main reason is that he's an avid fan of Filipino stick fighting. <laughs> and at the moment, he really cannot countenance giving that up. I accept that clearly he could not continue in that sport with warfarin. <laughs> Well, yes, indeed. So if you're not familiar, <laughs> if you've never had the pleasure, this is Filipino stick fighting. So I think Hugh was pretty right with the warfarin. Um, and I, I always chuckle with this guy about the stick fighting because now he's married with two young children and I think his better half has long since put a foot down with regards to the <laughs> stick fighting. Um, so... Uh, before I finish, I'm going to come back to the two guys that I talked to you about at the beginning and briefly tell you a little bit more about them. So this is Laurie. Um, he had his first Fontan in September 1987. So in fact, I think later this week will be the 30th anniversary of his Fontan. Um, he had problems with uh, abnormal heart rhythms and he too had a conversion to an extra cardiac Fontan in 2012. Um, he's now 51 years old. This is him with his dad. They're still best buddies. His dad's 80. Um, and they're a great pair. Uh, he goes for a walk around Cornwall Park most days. So if you've ever been to Auckland, Cornwall Park's a beautiful park in the middle of town. It's about 3 k's this walk. It's got some pretty decent little hills, actually. And he can cope with that fine. Does it Okay. Um, he likes to go fishing, his brother's got a boat and they go out fishing on the boat occasionally and he likes an occasional beer. And he's a good guy, I love seeing him in the clinic, I don't see him very often because he's so well, but uh, he's, he's doing pretty well at 51. The last slide I'm going to give back to our mate Keanu, um, who as I say is now five, um, and we're going to show you uh, one last video of Keanu um, up to his tricks about seven or eight months after uh, his Fontan operation. Um. <laughs> This is a bunch of people out there living their lives, dealing with a few medical issues, but having good lives, normal lives. And they're pretty inspirational to me. And I hope you've enjoyed hearing about them.